So previously on the channel, we've shown you videos about bending steel conduit, 90 degree bends, back to back bends, double sets and swan necks. However, in this video presentation, we're gonna look at some of the tools that we use in the electrical workshop in order to thread and deburr and connect the conduit to the actual system itself. The reason the behind the video is, I asked my level one and level two learners that aren't electrical apprenticeships to strip down their stocks and dies in order to remove the swarf that is created within the die itself and then reassemble them. However, after unassembling them, many of the learners couldn't put them back together. So it's inspired me to do this video to show you how to put together your stocks and dies in the correct order and also indicate some of the other tools that my learners have to identify under examination conditions to do with steel conduit. So if we bring the camera in now, let's look closely at how to put together our stocks and dies, and then some of the other tools that we're gonna use in the electrical workshop associated with steel conduit. So here we have our completed stocks and dies, and it might be quite difficult to see on camera, but inside there is full of little offcuts of metal called swarf, and that needs to be taken out and cleaned because the swarf itself will damage the thread that we put in on the steel conduit with it. So that thread will be damaged by buildup of swarf, okay? So my learners are required to break down the stocks and dies into its elements in order to clean it. And these are the elements that we've got. So we've got the stock itself and the handles, and they're simply screwed into the side, like so, and like so. So that's it, they're often called, that whole thing's often called the stock. So it's the handles added on, so we've got our stock itself. We've then got our guide we drop in. So the guide is dropped in next, like so. And it's important you get it the right way round. Some of my learners were trying to put it in that way round. We need the um, bolts themselves pointing up and our guide to be dropped into position like so. So our guide is in position. Next, we've got the actual uh, die itself, the bit that cuts the thread. And again, they come in four common sizes, 16, 20, 25, and 32 we're using 20 mil ones. And again, it's got a little bit of swarf in there and that would need to be cleaned out before starting the threading process. And you notice it has got two little recesses in there and they're really important we get those the right way around. On the back side, you can see there is no recesses. So when we pull it up into position like so, we drop it in so we can see our two recesses there and they line up with the bolts themselves. And then we just wind down the nuts. These nuts are not tightened off with a pair of grips. It's just tightened with the hand, like so. And we've built our stocks and dies. Okay, so important things to remember to get round our die itself around the right way. It's 20 mil in this case, and to remove all the swarf inside in order that we can cut our thread onto our steel conduit. So let's look at the, the next bit then. So we've got the thread on the end of our conduit. Okay, hopefully done with our stocks and dies. We know swarf in there. And it's important that we remove the sharp inner edge here on a finished end. And we're gonna use a reaming tool in order to do that. We could use a round file in the workshop and our students know that. We're gonna use a reaming tool in order that we do that. This would be put into the conduit bending machine vice and you'd ream out the actual end of the conduit to make it nice and smooth. Exam questions say, if you didn't ream out, what could be the problem? You could cause damage to the insulation around the conductors. And one of the questions is actually to identify that tool. That comes up as an exam question. We have to identify that as a reaming tool. We've also got a couple of uh, bush spanners. Okay, both of them do both 20 and 25 mil. So we've got 20 and 25 mil. We've got 20 and 25 mil in order that we can tighten up those bushes. Remembering in the workshop, the bush looks like this is a male bush and we tighten it off like so into our box or a coupler usually or like so yeah, in order to get it tight. Okay, so we've got a bush spanner. Again, I've seen in exam questions and at level one on a tool list where you have to identify these tools. So these are bush spanners, okay? We can mark our conduit. Last one for us is to mark the conduit. We can mark it using a scribe. Again, you'll be expected to identify that. And often on my videos, I've been using a permanent marker pen in order that you could see the actual mark that I put on the conduit itself. So generally you're gonna be asked to mark a conduit or metal work that could be cable tray, that could be trunking using a scribe. So we've looked at some of the tools that we're gonna be using in the workshop. Important we work out how to build up our stocks and dies in order that we can uh, unassemble them, in order to clean them out and reassemble them in order that we can use them. So uh, hopefully this whistle stop tour of some of the tools we're gonna use in steel conduit, I'd like to think this video has been some help.